In fact, so confident are we that this speed is a constant that we use it to define the meter. Since 1983, one meter has been defined as the distance traveled by light in a vacuum during one 300 millionth of a second. This definition works perfectly well if the speed of light truly is constant. But I'm not so sure it has always been this way. And it was this doubt that led me away from the mainstream of science. To understand VSL, you have to be prepared to see light in a new way. Imagine light as a greyhound, racing around the track in a hot pursuit of that elusive bunny. Its owner will tell you there is a maximum speed of dogs. They cannot go any faster. Their paws would snap, they'd overbalance, they'd crash with their faces on the track. <laughs> As the Greyhound races around the track, it's surrounded by other dogs, all subject to the same maximum speed of dogs. But then one day, something surprising happens. Blink and you'll miss it. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Superdog. Jet propelled, it travels at speeds other dogs can only dream of. Just because there is one maximum speed of dogs, it doesn't mean it has always been and will always be the same. And I believe the speed of light is similarly variable. I think in the early universe, the speed limit, the speed of light, was much, much higher. Allowing information to whiz around the universe, putting all the universe into contact. This would mean that those incredibly remote, yet strangely similar corners of the universe at the heart of the horizon problem had once been in contact thanks to this ultra-fast light. Their similarities are now explained. The horizon problem then, rather than being a paradox, becomes a natural outcome. Of course, if light is traveling ultra-fast, putting everything in contact, there is no need for the universe to undergo a sudden spurt of growth to solve the horizon problem. Cosmic inflation is simply not necessary in a VSL universe. VSL renders cosmic inflation redundant. While at the same time keeping the good bits of the Big Bang. But this theory really annoyed a large number of people. Firstly, the proponents of cosmic inflation would spend all their lives trying to get their little fix for the Big Bang Theory accepted. And secondly, all those physicists would like their constants to be constant and who couldn't quite come to grips with the fact that perhaps these constants were a bit more flexible, more accommodating. You can't really blame them for that. For decades, they've been using the constancy of the speed of light in hundreds of equations used to describe fundamental aspects of our universe. They called it C and they used it to calculate everything. Lorentz transformations, electric fields, 
tidal stresses around black holes, black body radiation, Hawking radiation, black hole entropy, the works. So it's not surprising that they were annoyed with my suggestion that the speed of light perhaps was not a constant. Particularly since if VSL is correct, even the daddy of all the equations, E equals MC square, may have to be rethought. And that, as we know, means revising the whole of Einstein's theory of relativity. And that's why they call me a heretic. But there is nothing wrong with having a new theory. As the cat in the drain pipe shows, that is what cosmology is all about. After all, there was a time when the existence of primordial light from the Big Bang was just a theory, until cosmologists worked out what to look for. The cosmic microwave background had been there all along, right under our noses. And it turned out to contain vital clues about the earliest stages of the universe. The discovery that every detectable galaxy was receding from Earth proved that space was expanding. Combined with the wealth of information from the CMB, this is proof enough to make the Big Bang Theory the best and most widely accepted explanation for why our universe looks and behaves the way it does. The biggest fly in the ointment is the horizon problem, the fatal flaw in the story of the universe, and the stimulus for radical new ideas such as cosmic inflation and VSL. Now it's time for my theory of the varying speed of light to prove itself against all other theories devised to solve the horizon problem. So all I have to do now is find the evidence, the observations, that will prove or disprove this theory. The clues I need are out there somewhere in the cosmos. They may be closer than I could ever imagine. I just have to know how to look. And if it doesn't work out, who cares? I've got a million other ideas.